Hi, welcome to another instalment of Sounds Unheard Online Masterclass. My name is Thomas Meadowcroft. Uh, the purpose of this short presentation is to start thinking about the political economy of music. What do I mean by this political economy of music? I mean the relationship between music and how it is produced and consumed and what value, economic or otherwise, we might give to music. Music and economics don't make good bedfellows. Economics at its worst is a clunky, jargon-filled pseudoscience, whereas music at its worst is also a clunky, jargon-filled pseudoscience, but nonetheless can be profoundly moving and insightful in and of itself. We want music, quite rightly, to be outside of any field of economic exchange or outside the world of money in a, in a pure sense. There is a human necessity with artistic endeavours kind of like love or justice, healthcare and education, where they should not come with a price tag or be reduced to a monetary value. Art should be off limits from the ravages of late capitalism where literally everything, real or abstract, can be bought or sold. We treasure music because it can move our bodies, it moves us out of our bodies, it slips away from language, it removes us from the grind and boredom of our everyday lives, etc, etc. This is the mysterious non-economic value of music, which is beautifully encapsulated in the phrase when we get together with other musicians and say, let's play for its own sake. There is, however, another phrase which is also rewarding but in a different way, that's let's play because we have a paid concert next week. Professional artists need to be paid to sustain and finish their work, which of course is an economic fact in a society like ours. With the arrival and dominance of the internet as a medium, much has been said about how musicians and artists are gonna get paid for their work within this new economic landscape. Like news about the unfolding environmental crisis, the news is often bad news. On the one hand, at least in relation to the enormous top-down profits seen in the music industry in the mid to late 20th century, these profits are now declining. And with the democratization of technology and platforms for disseminating one's own music, the supply of music is now at the point of saturation. On the other hand, Although artists now have the possibility to completely control every aspect of our work instead of being owned by record companies, it's not clear who is actually listening aside from the artists themselves and the cool guys over at Google. As the meme would have it, the internet giveth and the internet taketh away. To make things more complex in the deregulated labour market that is our post-industrial or consumer society, artists are under pressure to be ever more flexible, more adaptive, more skillful, more multi-talented, and even more marketable, simply in order to adjust to a rapidly changing work environment driven by technological advancement. Artists are expected to run from one mini job or gig to another, just as they run from one software platform to another. From Uber driver to composer, to producer, and back to waiter, the job description, and the cultural imperative are one and the same, be creative. Negotiating this complex economic terrain, of course, as a musician can be very scary. When do you park the self-help, the music biz talk to one side so that it doesn't meddle with your creative work? And yet nonetheless, remain in a financially realistic position to pay the rent. Or moreover, how do you buy enough time to work and be creative? Certainly, you could stay cool, true to yourself, your work and your roots, or be original in the hope that hipness and originality will win out or subvert the economic and cultural status quo. The problem for artists is that being cool and original is the status quo. Coolness and originality are commodities that can be bought or sold like any other commodity. Take Kurt Cobain, for example. Holding out on talent and luck alone only serves to further mystify things. Coolness helps create a niche because, as some thinkers claim, the political economy of late capitalism flows decentrally. It pervades everything we do and everything we make. Therefore, it's not enough to create a niche for yourself. Once you're in a niche, you also need to get out. 
How then, positively speaking, can we imagine music as worthless, having no value, and use this concept as a source of inspiration when making music? By this, I do not mean forget about trying to pay the rent with music or take up another career and become a prosumer, but rather use the, econ the economics of music as a direct means of making art whilst imbuing one's own work with a political potential.